Um, first of all, I'd like to thank um, Adam for allowing us to do this. Um, secondly, I'm quite humbled that I get to speak in front of you guys. Uh, for the last probably week or so since I knew this was going to happen, I've been thinking to myself, I wonder what I say to quite accomplished fishermen, because there are a few here. Um, and I've actually come up with a bit of a, a thing that I'm not going to talk about plastics. Uh, I'm not going to talk about blades. I'm going to show you exactly what I do with crankbaits, and that's it. Um, now, over the years, I've actually shown a couple other people what I do. And for an instance, Scott Baker won a, uh, a world titles on what I showed him and how to do it. And it's a proven method. It's basically that black crank that you probably all use. Who uses the black crank here? Everyone? Yep, from ProLaw. Um, if you're not, get on them. They work really well. Uh, I've used them for, since they've ever been out. Uh, and before that, I was using, uh, uh, what was it, a camion, as you'd remember years ago. Um, a few things about what I want to go through tonight is, I think you'll find uh, what I'm going to teach you, or what I'm going to say tonight, go and try it tomorrow in the next couple of days, they're not revolutionary things. They're not things that you're going to go, I never thought of that. You're going to go and give it a go, and you'll probably catch another fish because of it. And that's about all I can offer you because I look around and I know everyone here can fish. So tonight we're going to talk about some rod selection, the crankbaits that I use today, and also through a blade, though I don't like them, which we've got them just here. Uh, Luke, I'll just get you to pass those out. Um, these are actually the lures I use today to catch fish, guys. Um, I would have caught, I don't know, what, maybe 15 fish today. No dramas, quite easy. Um, there's tiger shrimp there, I call him Dennis Rodman. That's uh, one of my favorite colors, uh, flash green. No one uses it, I know they don't, I love it. I reckon it's a great color. Um, the reason why I believe black and flash green work is that brim, trout, and a lot of other fish actually feed on what they call a silhouette. I don't actually think they go near a color. I don't think they're interested in a color. I think that you match the silhouette, and that's what we found in trout. And many, many years ago when I started brim fishing, we did exactly the same. We used a black colored lure and it caught more fish. And I think it's very straightforward. Um, folks, does anyone here use a rod over seven foot long? Anyone? What are you using for? Are you using them for crankbaits or are you using them for plastics? Or what's the story? Crankbaits. Crankbaits. Right. Some of the things I see that people do wrong is they use a rod that's not designed. And I'll give you an idea. About, oh, probably 10 years ago now, I did a tournament with a Dave Hedge on the, in a boat, okay? And after that day, I sucked. And I don't think Dave did that well either, did we? Down in the Southern Brim series or something oh, down yeah. here. Yeah, we were terrible. But that day, I found what they call a camion. And it changed everything I did. And this is why. This rod here is a thousand bucks. It comes from Japan. And it's designed to do one thing and one thing only. Let's throw a camion. That's all I use it for. They walk rivers, they throw this, and you can feel everything with it. And it's so crucial because you pop it into the weed and you can pull it out. Very simple. The fish sit there looking at it, comes out of that weed, and they eat it. That's the first one that I ever used for the camions, and it's the only one I use. Now, that's a Smith's rod for a Smith's lure. Took me ages to find that rod, ages. And I still use it today. And it's only for one purpose, that's it. And when I say only one purpose, that's a camion in two foot of water. That's it, or shallower. And if I'm not catching on the weed, I go and find weed. Rock bars, exactly the same thing. Bump it into there, pull it off, wait. After a little while, then the pro lures came out. And I actually didn't use anything else. That was all I ever did. I actually just would go camion fishing. That's what I used to call it, camion fishing. And I would use it for trout as well in the rivers down in the snowy mountains. After that, Pro Lua brought out this crankbait and a gentleman by the name of Bryce Beach, he actually showed me them. And the second I seen it, I fell in love with it and I'll tell you why. When you don't have rain, the prawns get smaller. Camions look like a little prawn. When you get rain, the prawns get bigger and so people were using something like a chubby. Does anyone know that at all? No idea. 
So these are little things I'm giving you. So start to think about when you go into a tournament that has it rained, has it been raining? Because if it's been raining, the prawns are going to be bigger. It's very simple. Prawns are around weed beds. Then the pro lure came out and they actually sit in between a camion and a chubby. Very straightforward. It was the next size between them both. And the reason why I fell in love with the pro lure is because of that lure right there. And I know a lot of you guys are using them. There it is. It's just the black crankbait. On a different rod though. Which this rod is completely nothing else to me bar the pro lure rod. It's a seven foot six flats rod from Samaki. He brought about four different types of this rod out. That one there is what they call the Zing Extreme. There's a couple of other ones that are just in different modular fibres within the rods that have been brought out over the years. Always seven foot six. Does anyone know what hooks the cameo, what hooks the Pro Lures come out with? Yeah, okay. It was one of the things I said to, to Heath from Pro Lure straight away was we need better terminal tackle on them. Guys, I don't know, how much are you selling these for, Adam? The Pro Lure crankbaits? So at 15 bucks, you pull out a, a lure straight out of the box that's ready to catch a fish of a lifetime for 15 bucks. It's got the best terminal tackle on it and the sharpest hooks. The reason why I use a seven foot six rod is because of how sharp those hooks are and I don't want the fish to pull out. It's very simple. Wind really slow. The next thing I'll say to you is, if you think you're winding slow, go slower. It's very simple. Try it. Try not even moving the handle and see what happens. So we passed around those rods um, and we've gone over a couple of little things there that uh, I'm just trying to brush through it as quick as I can because Adam wants to get to the football. He did say that. Folks, does anyone cast their lure out and leave it sit there on the water? Anyone? Only when you're having a sleep. Dave, I know Dave would sometimes. A yeah. couple of seconds. I'm only talking about crankbaits today, but... No, exactly right. What sort of lure? Yep. So, did you get a big fish off that? Yes. While it was sitting there? Does anyone make a conscientious effort to let it sit there? Yeah. 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 So to give you an idea, I actually cast my lures out and I leave them sit there and I wriggle the rod tip about two or three times and I watch the lure just go under and come back up. Go under and come back up it's before I even whine. I do it on every cast. Always have, always will. The fish, if they don't eat it right then, they'll come over to it and they'll be behind it. Has anyone ever wondered how many fish look at your lure when you're winding it in? Anyone? Yeah, it would hurt. <laughs> One of the reasons I say that for is because I've actually won tournaments from doing exactly what I've just said to you. There's lots of guys here that have won tournaments, but the ones that haven't, it's usually all in the little things that you're doing. Speed, slow down, and let the fish come to you. The other thing I'd like to ask, is anyone ever consider the way that they cast into the wind? Anyone at all? Who casts with the wind? Who casts into the wind? Does anyone cast across the wind? So if I said to you that every time a fish is swimming in the water, the bait fish isn't going to swim against a 20 or a 30 knot wind, is it? It's going to be too hard for it. Or a prawn is never going to swim against that wind. It's too hard. Why? Why? Yeah. Well, a lot of the a lot of the a lot of the fish are actually sitting into the wind, poking their heads into the wind. They're like trout. This is how I see it. As the wind gets blowing across the water, the fish put their heads into the wind. 
Something I learned a really long time ago is to actually cast across and bring your lure across the wind and continually do that. The fish will be waiting in ambush. And the reason for this, and this is my ideology of it, if I was a fish and I'm sitting into the wind like this and his mate's next to me, mate next to him, next to him, and I bring my lure that way, it's a big chance more fish are gonna see it. Very simple. In my eyes, it's the same as you do in trout when they're, when they're in a river. Now the little things that I've just said to you right then, I believe, is the things that I've won tournaments from. I've seen Luke win tournaments from those things. I've even seen novices win tournaments within a couple of months of just doing exactly what I just said to you. Go slow, take your time, and use a good quality lure. Does anyone take hooks out with them in their kite? Yep, yep. And you do have a set of split ring pliers? Yep, it's a must. If they're not ninja sharp, you're wasting your time. Once again, they come out of the pack ready to go. That's why I use them, I love them. I think they're the best bang for buck you can get. You'll find it's the angle of the way it swims instead. Yep. Have you ever tried to catch it into the weed and get it to pop out without getting weed on it? Yeah. Yep. It, it's something that I to try and do all the time. I think it's an amazing technique. The fish are sitting there waiting in ambush. It's very easy for them to get to it. Folks, the things I've just spoken to you about is something that I've done for a really long time. I, I know it's a, a, a technique that works. Don't race out and think it's going to change the world. Just try a couple of the things that I've just said to you tomorrow and the next few days, and I guarantee you'll put another fish in the boat because of it. Make sure you use good quality rods. The reel isn't that important, but the better rod you can get that suits your application will change what you do. If you can find rods that are designed for that lure, get them. They're not cheap, but they do a far better job. Adam's actually got a couple of rods in there that would do it. When I looked today, I went, yeah, there's a couple of Miller rods in there that are, that are red hot. They're really nice. Um, I don't know what other people do. I only use braid and, and I actually use sniper. I don't know if anyone knows what that is. Is that a spinning fluoro? Yeah, that's all I use for letter. I've never really changed. I've used rocked a few times and that's about it. I don't waste my time with fluoro a lot of the time straight through. I have before, I'm okay at it, but you lose too much sensitivity. Um, I know Luke said that he uses really long leaders, so do I. If I want to get that bite, I go long. Very simple. Um, guys, what I passed around before were actually Adam's stock, so make sure they do come back. That's what I used today. That's what I caught fish on. The biggest fish I got today was 33. That was it. I got lots of fish. They were very easy to catch, but they're the colours. The other thing I'd like to say is, is that he has given you probably the best information I know of any angler that I've ever fished with. The technique he has for grubs and what he just said to you is bang on. It is so good that I, I can't believe how good it is. It works with other grubs as well. But that pro lure one, I don't know what it is, it's, it is amazing. It's, it's a really good lure. Grab some, give it a go. Exactly what he said, cast past the structure and use that heavy weight. I actually use, realistically, I don't even ever use plastics, but if I do, it's 1 16th to 1 8th. That's it. I can't do what he does and vice versa. I fish shallow, guys. This deep to about a metre. That's about it. I don't want to fish any deeper. That's it. That's where my fish are, and I can do it from summer to winter, all year round. The fish are there, you just have to find them. Um, guys, we've gone over the rod, sharp hooks, slow down, let your lure sit on the water for as long as you can. Be really patient. And the last thing is, cast across the wind, not with it. I guarantee you, you'll pick up more fish. Has anyone got any questions? Well, that's it. No questions? Do they no. Still smell, do they still, uh, sell this, this 
They do. They've, they've actually changed the, they've changed the colour of it. Um, I, I would have to. I actually got a friend to t pick that up in Japan, yeah. for me, um, and take photos, send them all back to me, um, and to confirm which one it was. They do have a trout and spin over there still in four different models. They're a thousand bucks, guys. It's it's that simple. There's another rod that they have as well called a bay liner. Does anyone know the bay liner at all? Adam would know. That's a really good rod. It really is. It would be on par with that Samaki. It was just that Josh made that rod specifically for flats fishing that we did all the time. And and that it's an amazing rod at 200 bucks, guys. Very simple. Beg your pardon? Uh, yes, I have. Um, the thing with the the thing with the trout um, up the snowy mountains is there's only now about three or four rivers that are really good. Um, the three rivers I really like to fish are down in the Monero, and the actual rivers themselves have been affected by the drought now, and the fish have got smaller, so the pro lure is actually a little bit too big. Um, a camion is actually a trout lure that that came over from from Japan many years ago. Um, and they, they certainly do work in the Threadbow River. I've caught plenty of big fish on the, on the Pro Lua. They actually prefer that flash green, the one I just passed around before. Um, has anyone used this ever? I reckon it would be one of the most underrated colours in their whole range. Flash green. Grab it out, throw it around. Um, once again, it's a silhouette, yeah? I do use like clear colours all the time, but I always start at silhouettes. Another little bit of, a, bit of advice, I don't know if anyone does this, does anyone try and match the colour of the water with their lure? It's a number one, it really is. Start there, start right at the basic right there. See the colour of the water? Tie the lure, it looks the same colour. So if the water's green, tie on green. If it's clear, climb on clear. But black and this colour just seem to throw a better silhouette. Did you have something to say? Just a little thing on that, Luke. Um, I believe the colour does matter in saying that. The reason I say that is, is that I think each colour throws out a different silhouette. Okay, so don't, don't think that I'm just saying they feed on silhouette exclusively. I'm saying that each colour throws out a different silhouette and that's where I, I could never get my head around why motor oil works until I've seen that light go on it. And so when they see it in UV, they're seeing it solid. They're seeing that, that that's solid. Okay, and if they're seeing that that's solid, they're seeing that that black's solid, they're seeing that this is solid. If that's got UV on it, they're seeing it as solid. <coughs> no UV at all, but it's just a solid colour that just, just chucks a contrast. Yeah, yeah, and it's a contrast as a silhouette. I, 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 you're right. I, I completely believe it. It's the same as when you trout fish at night with flies. It's a, it's a, a shape, a silhouette, the pattern, and the colour does change. And you're a hundred percent right. And I think what it is, is it's the way it, the light comes off that silhouette, and the fish are in fixated on a certain thing that they're eating at that time, and that's why it works. Um, you'll never know completely. These are just things that I've observed over the years. Um, and, and I honestly can't go past black, you know that. I, I, I use it every day if I'm fishing. I love it, I think it's the best thing ever. I use black in every lure we have. Um, and, and if you only gave me one lure, I'd just take black. That would be it. Uh, the other thing is, guys, tomorrow when we're there, Jim Barry just asked me to ask you, if you're pulling up at the car park, follow him, because someone's got to walk with him for the council, otherwise we'll get in trouble. And when you're having a beer tonight, tomorrow, Eric Woods, have one for him because, you know, 
good guy. We miss him, you know. He's been around for a long time, and yeah, that's why we're all here because we enjoy fishing. And don't take it so serious. Maybe share a bit more information. If you want any questions, come up and see me. Come up and see Luke. Grab my box. You can take any lure you want out of it. I really don't mind. I'm happy to give them out and go and have a fish. Any questions? What Only four. Don't waste my time with anything else. I just want it really simple. I, I, I hate overcomplicating it. In fact, when I open my boxes of lures, I, I sometimes think to myself, why do I have all these lures? I, I don't need them. So, um, yeah, look, uh, I, I usually use Samaki braid. Um, I'm, I'm a bit of a, I guess, a, a bit of a braid whore. Like, I just chop and change whatever, you know, whatever's going to work. The, the, in my eyes, I think a braid's a braid, you know. Fire line was really good for years. Um, only ever four. I never change. I don't, I don't waste my time. If I get smoked, it was better than me. Another thing I wanted to say, actually, has anyone ever caught a really big fish on a crankbait? Yeah, well, like, well, over a kilo. Yeah, yeah. yeah, has anyone been smoked by a really big fish on a crankbait? Yeah. Does everyone go really hard on them? No, 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 don't, yeah. No, don't. Just try and ease them out, honestly. One of the reasons I say that for is there's two reasons. The reason I love crankbaits is this. That fish has to swim away from what it's doing to take my, my bait. I've already got half the game won. I've got his head away from structure, he's coming towards me. The second thing is, if I put hurt on him, he's gonna put hurt on me. So I always just do that really light drag and just try and wind them out. And half the other time, if you're not going too hard on them, they probably will only ever go under one pole and you can unwrap it, or under one lease and then unwrap it. And I, I remember distinctly catching a uh, a, a big brim at Foster in the worst country you've ever seen and I didn't even load the rod up. I just wound it and it just came out and I, I couldn't believe it, to be honest. And, and from that day on, I've always just gone, oh, I'm not going to go hard on them. I always just take my time. And the other thing with really big brim, hope that this happens, if they scoff it. Has anyone found if they scoff it, they don't fight as hard? Yeah, so, and that's something that they really like, that black, and they, they love to scoff it down. And I, I don't know why that is, but when they do, they kind of choke up. And little things to pay attention to, how hard the fish go if you've had rain. They don't seem to go anywhere near as hard. And I don't know if anyone's ever noticed that. I don't know, Luke, Luke and I have talked about that many a times. But after a big rain, they don't seem to fight as hard. So keep that in mind too. So, you know, if you put a bit of hurt on them, you might not need to at all because they might just come straight out, even if you're, you know, winding really lightly. Um, but like I said, braid, leader, four pound, nothing else. And really slow, guys. Sense, I use Guzzly Goop. Don't know if you know what that is. It's S Factor from overseas. Had it for years. That's all I use. Don't use anything else. Yeah, have you? Yep, all the time. Yeah, all the time. Every time I ever fish with them, it's straight on. So to give you an idea, I might change. I'd probably change trebles every third fish. That's about it. Every third fish, guys. I only need three fish. That's it. That's yeah. all you need. Sometimes two. You know, it depends on what comp you're in. I think Stewie won the grand final a few years back. He had two fish on the last day or something, didn't you? Yeah. You know what I mean? You only need, you only need what you need. It's, if you've got really sharp hooks, fish is coming towards you, you've got them out of structure, it's all in your part from there. Uh, any other questions? Let's get home and watch the footy, eh? You're keen? You're keen? I don't know. No idea. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. Do I ever fish what? Long. What do you mean long? Every time. I'm not scared. I will cast over four racks. Don't care. Problem is, there's a few, a few ideologies regarding that, and this is something that I've observed and watched. Has anyone ever caught a fish over the other side of the racks, and you're wondering how you're going to get them in? Yeah? Yeah. So has anyone ever been and had the opportunity to have maybe 10-pound line and 10-pound leader and skull drag them across the surface? Have you had them fall off at the boat from doing that? Have you had them fall off at the edge of the boat? When you've done it? Yeah. So when you do it, if you're skull dragging that fish across, don't stop. Flick them straight in the boat and deal with the trebles you're going to get in your feet. Because if you stop, you've stretched their mouth and the hooks fall straight out. So 
don't go for the net, pole them straight in. Um, if, if I'm fishing racks, if I was down in Woolaware, I would cast over, I'd put the longest casts I can over those stumps. I'm not going to go to Woolaware Bay, it's too far for me, I'm too lazy. I'll just fish the main river, um, I don't get to fish anymore, so uh, just other commitments. Um, but if it was me, I'd be straight down in the stumps. Uh, there's lots of them, rock boulders, all those rock boulders, just cast over them. I I've had sessions down there where I've lost 300 bucks worth of gear. And that was basically because I was going too hard on those fish. Literally. Just too hard. Just let them do it. Because half the time, they just run off somewhere else. And if you go hard on them, they flight and go over into a rock bar or, or, or a thing. But I would cast straight over the top of them. Don't. So you you've got to hook the fish first, don't you? Worry about the complications later. That's, that's you know. And, and Chris Hickson does that all the time. You'll see him fishing. If you ever see him fish, he'll be up under a bridge like this and he'll cast around here and he'll come back here and he'll get that fish out. I've seen Stewie do it. I've seen Andrew do it. They, they you know, cast suicidal. I don't like that. I don't like structure fishing. I'm not a big fan of it. I'd rather be on the flats uh, or, or fishing, literally, this much water. But, you know, where I get plenty of fish. But if you want to know those techniques, come up, ask me. If you want to catch up for a fish, I'll see what I can do. And next time there's a comp on, even at Woi Woi, I'll show you how to do it. Very simple, very easy, basics. Long rods, soft, sharp hooks. Leave them sit there, bit of scent, cast across the wind. Get the fish in front, get the lure in front of the fish. Any other questions, guys? Done? All good? Thanks heaps for coming, we really appreciate it. Have a great night. If you've got any questions, yell out tomorrow, all right? <laughs>